Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. If this is your first time visiting my channel, then welcome as opposed to welcome back. My Year of One is my low buy project that I'm doing this year, which follows on from my no buy year that I did last year. My low buy year is working in tandem with me also trying to learn to budget. So I do two videos at the end of each month. One is my money diary video, which is what this video is. It's my money diary for the month of March and that is how I spent my budget in March and how I feel about how I spent my budget in March. And I also do my monthly haul videos, which is where I discuss the process of how I chose what to spend my one item allowance on that month and the sort of decision making process around buying and how I feel like starting and stopping shopping and reintroducing that back into my life. So I have content that is around that sort of ethos of trying not to overspend, not to overconsume, not to mindlessly consume appeals to you then please do consider subscribing to my channel. For today as I said we are doing my March money diary so this is how I spent my budget in March and yeah, let's just get on into it. My March opening budget was £250.75. So I rolled £75 that I didn't spend last month into my budget in March. And I had set a goal which was to try and save around £100 out of my budget this month. In case you haven't watched last month's video, the whole reason for that was because I'm looking at the amount that I'm spending on entertainment each month. So last year entertainment, it was a category, but I was really not counting my subscription services out of it, which this year I am. I'm taking them out of my budget. So that's Netflix, Spotify, Audible, was also Disney Life at the start of the year, but I have since cancelled that. Um, and I was looking at trying to save £100 this month so that I could maybe look at an annual subscription to some of those things so that I wasn't paying it every single month and wasn't giving that chunk of my budget every single month to those things. But that has not happened this month so there's the big spoiler. However, I'm actually, if, oh no I wasn't trying to spend £100, I was trying to save £50, sorry. I thought if I'd saved £50 last month that I could roll over and then spend £100 in April on one of those annual subscriptions. Um, and kind of be working off a budget of £200 across March and April. Um, so that was the plan and that hasn't really happened but I will explain why that hasn't happened. I'm quite happy actually at the fact that that hasn't happened so I just needed to frame that because the very first category that we're going to talk about is one of the reasons that that hasn't happened but it's kind of happened. Anyway, to get into it, beauty services is the first category and I spent £33 on beauty services in the month of March. Now, of course, we are still in lockdown, so beauty services are not currently running. So I didn't actually spend it on the service in March, but I spent the money in March. And what that is, is that I have booked my first nail appointment for actually the month of May was the earliest I could get in. And I have paid it in full for just a basic nail appointment with no nail art or anything so I might end up spending a little bit of money in May to add some nail art on but what that means is that I've spent that £33 this month which means I don't need to actually pay it in May so although it's not saving the money to physically roll over to have it in May it's money that I've spent this month that I didn't really benefit from spending this month that I will benefit from when I don't need to spend that money in May, does that make sense? So I'm actually really happy that I've done that. I feel like that's something I do want to maybe look into is booking in my nail appointments. Maybe if I do have a little bit extra one month booking in the next month's nail appointment and just paying it in that way it's paid rather than trying to work it in every single month because I do like getting my nails done fairly regularly. Um, they're actually not so bad now, they've started growing again. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. They were absolutely terrible when I first took my gels off, they all broke, they were all awful, um, but they have started growing again. However, I hate painting my own nails, so I'm looking forward to going back to having my nails done, but it is obviously something that needs to come out of my budget, which hasn't been coming out of my budget for the last few months because it's not been able to. So I'm quite glad in a way that I've paid that this month so that I can ease in the fact that a lot of things as restrictions lift with lockdown need to start coming out of my budget that I have not been used to coming out of my budget thus far this year. So that was £33 in beauty services. 
and then I didn't spend anything on beauty service replacement items or miscellaneous services. I did spend £35 on experiences in the month of March so I bought a ticket to the John Lewis virtual beauty weekend um, which I do get a goodie bag from so that will have to go into my beauty inventory but the cost of the ticket with the class and the goodie bag was £35 so that's what that came from and I watched the Katie Jane Q's uh, Saturday night makeup masterclass and do you know yeah as far as lockdown entertainment goes I quite enjoyed it. I don't know if it's something that I will I've done two of them now and I don't know if it's something that I will regularly spend on going forward but I feel like at the moment we're not going anywhere, we're not really seeing anyone so doing these sort of virtual events is quite nice. Um, I don't know if I'd spend £35 every single time on one of them um, and there are quite a few free ones out there but yeah I'm quite enjoying them. As far as lockdown entertainment goes it's some of the best that we've got on offer so I have no regrets on £35 being spent on experiences. Eating out, I didn't spend anything on eating out in March which is surprising but I'm okay with it. However, work lunches. I spent £72.15 on work lunches. In February, I've got my spreadsheet down here so sorry if I keep looking down. So in February I spent £91.31 on work lunches. So I did cut it down, I would still like to cut that down further so my goal for April is to spend less than £50 on work lunches. Now I feel like work lunches, it's it's one of those ones I feel like I want it to be zero but the more I've thought about it the more I'm like well that's not realistic but if I can cut it down to being less than £50 in a month and then I would ideally like to get it down to less than £40 a month so that would be like £10 a week essentially which would get, um, I tend to buy a 24 packet of Diet Coke once a week which is £9 if it's not on offer or £7 if it is on offer which it occasionally is. So I tend to buy that and I feel like that's probably, even if I was bringing my own food I would probably buy that Diet Coke every single week so I feel like £9 a week is realistically probably the least that I'm going to spend. So I do also buy diluting juice for work um, which I know is financially better than Diet Coke is but yeah I feel like £9 is probably the minimum I'm ever going to get that down to spending but we shall see. So it got down by £20 this month and I would like to get it down another £20 to being £50 or less in the month of April. Entertainment. So this is another big category. So £7.99 was my Audible subscription, £8.99 was Netflix, £9.99 was Spotify. I then spent £5 was my buy-in for a thing at work, £4 on my Patreon payment, £4.50 I bought a book in Sainsbury's just on a bit of a whim, £3.99 when I downloaded a Kindle book and then lastly £18 which was buying three more Audible credits because I was listening to a series and I finished the second one and I really wanted the third one and when I went on to Audible instead of buying the, the, the third one on its own I think to buy the third book on its own was like £16 or for £18 I could buy three more credits which is what I chose to do. However I did start looking at the annual subscriptions options where there are, where there are annual subscription options and I had thought Netflix and Spotify both offered annual I don't know why I obviously made that up because they do not. So of the subscription services that I am paying regularly which is Spotify Premium, Netflix and Audible, the only one that actually offers an annual subscription option is Audible but because I've just bought the three extra credits what I have actually managed to do is then freeze my Audible membership for 30 days so in the month of April I'm not going to pay anything to Audible because I've got those extra credits and I can still spend them even though I've frozen my membership that was what I wasn't sure about but I have checked it and I can because I just actually downloaded a new book and I've, I've not paid anything it's now the what, what's today the 4th of April I'm trying to film this edit it and post it on the same day so we shall see if we if we manage that. So although I spent the £18 this month on top of my Audible subscription, what I've done is frozen my Audible 
for the next month so again it's kind of similar to my nails in that I've spent that money and it's saving me paying the same money later um, and the other thing is it's worked out slightly cheaper because generally I'm spending £7.99 a month which gets me one download a month so the £18 works out to three credits works out is £6 per download so actually I've kind of saved myself even more money because in a way I'm saying right if I freeze my membership for the next two months then I've actually only spent £6 in those months memberships to get the credit for each of those months plus the one that I've already spent. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So yeah I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that. I am still very much considering some kind of annual subscription to Audible but I'll freeze it for the next month and I'll, I'll think about it later down the road. I've also this again this is now kind of going into April I've cancelled Spotify at this point again they do make Spotify so difficult the free version is horrible and um, it's literally like I put it on when I was out my walk last night and I listened to one song then I got three adverts then I got two songs then another three adverts and the ratio is just like in comparison to if you watch a YouTube video there might be an advert maybe at the start maybe like two adverts within it to you know a 20 odd minute YouTube video the ratio on Spotify is just horrendous and the YouTube adverts are generally shorter and skippable these are so long I feel like I'm just like the time is just all horrendous and it's obviously done on purpose because they want you to get on to, to get on Spotify premium um, but yeah I'm going to try and resist Spotify for the month of April as well so basically if anybody's got any podcast recommendations please let me know I've been getting back into podcasts that's what I've started listening to over the past couple of days when I've been out walking and things I'm not running at the moment so I feel like if I'm walking I can listen to a podcast I prefer music for if I'm doing like the couch to 5k which I've not been doing but I feel like I'd quite like to get back into doing I'm such a fair weather runner so I don't know if spot if not having Spotify is a long term solution kind of thing but yeah I'm going to keep trying to cancel it when I can listen to other things and then pick it back up one of the things that I kind of I'm thinking about is that if I'm cancelling Spotify that's where the Audible annual subscription could come in because there's sort of different tiers and you can get excess books more than you would get kind of for that amount of money if you were paying it monthly if that makes sense oh, I'm phrasing this really strangely but basically I could get more downloads for not very much more money if I pay it in an annual subscription basis to Audible I'm kind of thinking if I'm going out walking if I don't have Spotify I might want to download more books which then again does make the Audible annual subscription potentially more appealing and um, so we'll see how that goes but I'm also trying to listen to podcasts because they're free to listen to, perfectly happy to listen to the adverts again because the sponsorships tend to be integrated into the podcast, they tend to be well thought through and I don't mind listening to some adverts, I just find the Spotify ones just a step too far in how many adverts I'm willing to listen to. So yeah, if you've got any podcast recommendations, leave them down below. Tools for hobbies, I didn't spend anything. Then replacements, I spent £46 on replacements this month. First of that was £24 which I spent on the Fresh Brown Sugar Body Polish. So basically what happened here, because this is actually more than £24, I'll link it up below, um, is that I had Space NK points that were going to expire so I had to spend them this month and I wanted to spend them on a replacement, I didn't want to use them to bring something that I know I'm not going to finish into my life so I opted for this one. I did put out a thing on my Instagram and quite a few people recommended the Rituals body scrub and then somebody also recommended the And Other Stories body scrub but obviously I was trying to spend my Space NK points so I went for this one but they are now both on my list for being potential future replacement items um, but this month I bought this one and I have no regrets because it smells lovely so bought that, that was £24 out of my budget once I'd taken off the rewards points. The last thing that I bought was this from Davines, it is my alchemic conditioner for copper hair um, which I got from Liberty and it was £22. I have finished multiples of these, 
the copper colour can be quite hard to get a hold of. Um, I got one from Liberty last year but it was the red one which is too pinky red so the copper one seems to come in and out of stock really sort of strangely but it came in and I just finished the other one and it was just all very serendipitous so I was very pleased to get a replacement of that. The only thing I would say because I've been doing the box dye in my hair you get a bottle of conditioner in the box dye which lasts more than just the time that you dye your hair so I feel like I've spent basically the last month finishing the conditioner that came with the box dye so that I could add the box dye to my empties and then not using my own conditioners but I do really really love this one so if this is more of a colour treatment mask than it is a conditioner like conditioner's kind of the wrong word for it that's the only other one that I finished alongside using the conditioner from the box dye so that'll be an unexpected thing about going back to the hairdresser more regularly it will cost me more money but it will mean that I'm actually working through my own products in my spare time rather than like the tube of conditioner that comes with the box dye lasting me for like a month so you know swings and roundabouts in terms of moving stuff out of my life versus trying to spend less money it's a whole thing so that was £46 across my two replacements which means my total monthly spend for the month of March was £248.61 which leaves me £2.14 that I'm rolling over to my April budget. I feel okay about how my money was spent this month. As I said I feel like I maybe have bitten off slightly more than I could chew with taking the budget that I set up last year trying to keep the amount the same but bringing replacements and subscription services into it because I feel like I hadn't really like I'd looked on paper at how much that was going to mean I was bringing in but I don't think I'd appreciated how much of an impact it was going to make in my actual like day-to-day -day spending. However I do feel the work lunches I want to get down to being less than £10 a week that I'm spending at work so bringing my own food and then if I buy juice then so be it kind of thing. So that's, that's the area I'm looking to address I feel like my entertainment will be less in April so I'll see how much of an overall impact that makes me feel like it's made and I am still considering the the Audible annual subscription so that is that is a potential but overall I feel okay about how I spent my money I feel like I got slightly better at it I feel like I was more aware of it this month I feel like I was more mindful particularly when I was at work I think I gave it more thought this month because I had that goal of saving the money and I was actually I was quite on track to save the money until towards the end of the month when the dates got announced and then and I did pay for my nail appointment and um, you know that was like one of the last days of the month so I would have saved that £33 and I feel like the £18 that I spent on Audible has sort of saved me future money and the £33 that I spent on my nails has saved me future money so between those two there's the £50 that I didn't save technically this month but I've kind of saved it by spending it this month and then saving it in other months so I feel like overall it's not been a bad month and I'm still under budget I mean the thing is I just didn't hit the goal that I was sort of aiming to hit but I still come in under budget and that's all I need to do really in the grand scheme of things but I am trying to prepare for future spending and obviously the world opening back up and regular costs that I'm currently not spending coming back into my life so I do still want to be getting it down a little bit so for the month of April here's my goals £50 or less on work lunches in the month of April that's how much I want to spend £50 is the maximum I want to spend on work lunches in April and I want to try and save £100 which means majorly majorly scrimping through April but I feel like having that £100 if I can save it in April it means I've got it for when I get my hair done in May because I've now booked my first hair appointment as well which is for the month of May um, so I feel like it'll let me just build that up a little bit so that May is not kind of back to normal and all my money's gone in one hair appointment and one nail appointment because I've paid the nails this month and if I can save £100 then I can put it towards my hair in May. Um, 
and at the same that gives me a little bit of a safety blanket whilst I'm also learning how to budget with socialising and things again which I'm hoping to do a little bit of in April within obviously the restrictions and things but yeah we'll see how it goes basically April save £100 spend less than £50 on food out at work that is the plan so that is everything really to talk about in terms of my budgeting at the moment I think it'll start I think these videos will start getting a little bit more interesting when the world opens up again because there'll be more kind of feelings and more decisions being made whereas you know at the moment it's not the highest stakes because if I am saving money I know it's benefiting me but at the same time I'm not really saving it for anything that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks so I feel like when the world opens up there'll be more processes to be discussed in terms of budgeting and how I feel about budgeting so I feel like these videos will get a little bit more interesting hopefully over the next couple of months but thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!